keeping a watch on things up in the upper Midwest. Well, actually, this is Northern Plains, I should say. Uh, as, we have, as we have a pretty intense, I'm going to actually show it here to you. We've been talking about this, this little in, intense uh, piece of energy up here that's uh, currently setting in Washington State. It's going to be moving across the Northern Plains tonight into tomorrow. As we get into tomorrow, we're going to going to continue to go through the northern plains in the upper midwest rain with it rain some storms could be some severe weather as well and then eventually going into the great lakes as we go into toward the middle of the week but by then if you could see here you see how see how more concentrated the energy is here but then by the time it gets out here it starts to uh, kind of fan out and kind of uh spin itself out a little bit now it's now it's still there it's not totally gone but it does appear uh that it will be deamplifying uh with time as it gets ready to be pulled into canada as a matter of fact you see that right there it's actually another piece of energy right behind it as well that we're going to have to watch here so if we look at our um let's take a look at our um our uh, reflectivity products here you see storms will continue to develop across southern Canada. Then you can see there are some storms firing up uh, in central Montana, moving and creating probably at one of those MCS-type clusters into the northern Dakota overnight before moving in tomorrow and again sparking some some uh, probably another cu a cluster or two of severe weather. It's a wind damage, I think, main threat through most of these. And then it kind of relaxes a little bit, and then we get to, as we go on into uh, – Later on into Wednesday, you can see right there, you can see right over northern Indiana there, kind of see a little line start to pop there. Got some bands up in tip Pennsylvania, Michigan. We could see some redevelopment of some thunderstorms uh, as we go on into Wednesday. Now, if we take a look, let's take a look at one that go the modeling goes a little bit further. Going to NAM three kilometer here, basically showing the same thing, clusters. Numerous thunderstorm clusters developing downwind of this feature. And then as, we, as it comes into the Great Lakes on Wednesday, you see right there, the NAM tries to fire a line of storms uh, in Indiana, as a matter of fact. So uh, something we're going to have to watch out for. And then eventually continue to develop across northern portions of Ohio. Uh, into southern Canada, maybe even, even into Michigan. We kind of roll it back here. You can see storms develop in Michigan as well. And as you can see, they're lining up in, in bands right ahead of the cold front. And then kind of uh, drifting on to the south. Now, I'm going to take a look at some of the parameters here to see if we have anything of note. And... As you can see here, the sig the uh, tornado parameter thing does come up. So let's take a look and see what our this is just a selected sounding in East Central Indiana, and let's see what we've got here. Well, I already see problems. <laughs> now you got see that dotted line there. You got some in, you got instability. You do have um, wind shear there. Got lots of cape. Um. But here's where the problem starts to lie, right about here. Yeah, up there about 18,000 feet or so, the air starts getting warm. And this is something that we've had a, an issue with, with warm air coming in, in from, from the deserts and from the southern plains, drought-stricken areas. And you can see here, temperatures warm as we go up, which we do not want. Want temperatures to continue to cool, and you can tell it's the elevated mixed layer coming in because look at all this dry air that's up there as well. So you got this warm, drier air coming in there, and you don't want that when it comes to thunderstorms. You can see it here how the lapse rates actually decrease as you go up. You want those to increase. Uh, it's decent there at the surface, but look how everything kind of trails off. Uh, as you go up in the atmosphere, it actually warms as you go up into the atmosphere, which is something that you do not want when you're looking at severe weather. And if we look at the, uh, even at the holograph here, that's pretty small. 
there's a little bit of turning in the lower levels, but for severe weather, particularly when you're looking at more significant severe weather, you want that to go up, that to be larger and more curved uh, when you're dealing with the severe weather. And what we're dealing with here, yeah, there's a little turning in the lower one kilometer of the atmosphere, but then everything kind of goes to a southwesterly or westerly direction, so it becomes more what we call unidirectional in the atmosphere, and that usually favors line segments. So, early thoughts about severe weather coming into Wednesday for the Ohio Valley and into the uh, Great Lakes. Not a very big risk. Mainly looks like a wind damage threat as it is. We'll see how the bound, how everything comes out from the, the uh, overnight activity as there will be clusters of storms that will come in and that could temper the heating somewhat as well. Um, but uh, as this uh, front front comes down into Wednesday, and of course, the dynamics are going to be de-amplifying with time and they're going to be pu pulling into Canada as well. So in terms of a wide-scale severe weather event or anything like that, at this point in time, not seeing it.